Welcome to a new episode of my Linux driver tutorials. Today I want to show you how you can implement the memory map callback in your own Linux kernel module for a device file. And on the way we will also learn a little bit about how memory and virtual memory is handled within the Linux kernel. So let's start. As you can see here I'm connected to my Raspberry Pi over SSH and now let me navigate into my Linux drivers tutorials folder. I've already prepared a little bit to save us some time so you can see this new folder 32 memory map here. Let me cd into it and let's take a look what's in here. So we have two source files, one for the driver, one for a user space test application and we have a separate make file to build everything. And let's start by taking a look at the driver. So I will briefly go over it. It's a very basic driver. Let's start at the init function. First, I'm allocating some chunks of memories about this page size and GFP current DMA we will talk in just a second. If this works successfully, I will register a device number. So I will register the device number 64, 0, and I will give the device the name mydev, and I will use the file operation specified in this struct here. So here I'm implementing a read and a write callback. Let's start by looking at the write callback. So what we are doing here is we are, we over the device file we can write data from the user space into the dyn dynamically allocated memory. So in this my data um, pointer here. And with the read callback we can read it back. So we will take my data and copy it to the user space buffer. So the read works. And what we are going to do today is we will implement the memory map callback. So I won't to go too much into details what memory map is. If you don't know it, there, I think there are other tutorials showing you this. But basically with memory map, what I will do here in this driver is I will pass a driver to the dynamically allocated memory um, referenced by this my data pointer. I will pass this pointer to user space of a memory map and then from the user space I can directly access it. That's the goal for today. But first let's talk about this strange defined set macros here. So kate set alloc is easy, it's allocating some memory dynamically and it initializes it with zeros. The first argument here is the size um, of in bytes how many bytes should be allocated. And here I'm using page size. So what's a page? To understand what the page is, you have to understand what a memory management unit is. So memory management unit or MMU is required to run a Linux operating system or to run the Linux kernel. And basically what it does is it translates physical addresses into virtual addresses and vice versa. So here for example the physical address coffee is translated into 302300 here for example. But why would you need virtual addresses? If we wouldn't have it, it would be horrible. So let's say in user space we would use physical addresses. Then with a simple pointer, one process or application can manipulate the memory space of another application and everything would crash, worst case. And with virtual addresses, every process has its own virtual address space and virtual view of memory and therefore processes or the memory of processes are isolated and they can't interfere with each and another's. And this is the goal of virtual addresses. And also the Linux kernel uses virtual addresses for the kernel space. But okay, nice to know, but what's about pages? Well, you have to know the smallest amount of memory which can be mapped by a memory ma management unit is one page or is the size of one page. And on Linux systems, typically a page is for kilobytes in size, but it can differ and you can also change the setting, I think. So it depends a little bit on the system and it's changeable, but four kilobytes is the standard nowadays. And this will lead us if we have an address, never mind if it's a physical or a virtual address, let the lower 12 bits are the offset within a page and the upper bits are the page frame number. Okay, this is quite obvious. So what we're doing here is we are allocating four kilobytes of memory. Okay, so good. 
but normally if I'm using kset alloc, I've always used the flag gfp kernel. So why I'm using gfp dma here? Well, you have to know we are using virtual memory or virtual addresses, even in the kernel space. So if you are you if you're allocating memory with the gfp kernel flag, it could have happened that we store it in our pointer here. This points to a position in our virtual memory. And then we have our continuous data, which we have allocated. But if the data exceeded the size of one page, it could happen that in physical memory, the chunks of data are not continuous. So here I have some bytes allocated in this upper half and some bytes allocated in the downer half. But if I'm using the GFPDMA flag, the kernel takes care that the memory is not split in the physical memory. So here, once again, this now is one chunk of data in the physical memory. And this is important because we want to pass a pointer to this physical memory to user space. And if it wouldn't be continuous data, we would have a problem. So this is the reason why I'm using GFPDMA here. But wait, the MMU can only map uh, page size, so this is the minimal size it can map. So for this example, if I only want to map one page size, I could have used GFP kernel 2. It couldn't be fragmented because the memory management unit can only map one page least. But if I would map four, or if I would allocate four pages here, for example, it could happen that with GFP kernel, it would be splitted in physical memory. But, and then I would need a GFP DMA here. So that's what I'm doing here. Okay, and now with this knowledge, I can um, implement the memory map function. And compared to read and write, it only takes very few arguments. So the return value is an integer, zero on success, error code else. And I will name the callback my memory map. The first argument is a pointer to our um, device file. And the second argument is a pointer from the type struct vm area struct. And I will call it vma here. I will explain what it is in just a second. Yeah, now. So vma stands for virtual memory area. And basically a vma is a region of virtual memory from a process. So we are getting a region from virtual memory of the process and we want to remap it so it will point to our my data pointer. And this is what we're going to do here in this callback function. So first I need a status variable. And now here in my VM area struct, there is a field called VM page of uh, page frame offset and here i can set the virtual the physical address to which this region should be mapped so but the problem is the my data pointer is a virtual address from the kernel's virtual address view of the memory so i need a function to convert the physical the virtual address into a physical address and when I include ASMIO, I have this convert functions available. So the convert function is called vert to fizz, and as an argument, it needs the yeah, address I want to convert. But now watch out. <clears throat> here, page, no, sorry, page offset. Um, here, this, here we need a page offset, not a virtual address. So how can we convert a virtual address to a page offset? Well, let's take a look at this picture. It's quite obvious. We just have to shift the virtual address by 12 bytes and we're done. So let's do this. But instead of 12, I will use the define page shift, which contain 12 on my system here. Okay, and now we have to do the remap. This can be, this is done by remap page frame number range. And this function needs the following arguments. So the first argument is our virtual memory um, area. The second one is the 
virtual address which should be mapped. The next argument is <coughs> the page offset in from a phys from the physical memory view to which it should be mapped. Then the next thing is the size and the easiest way to calculate the size is to take the end and subtract the start from it. So this is a pointer to the um, end of the virtual memory area and this is a pointer to the start of the virtual memory area and by subtracting the start from the end we will get the size. And the last argument is the permissions or protection flags. So fm page prot. So this here defines which operations are valid. So if we are, if we can write to the pointer, if we can read from the pointer and so on and so forth. I will show you how to set this up in the user space um, function call of mmap in a second. And on success, this should return zero, but if we are getting a positive value, an error occurred. So I will print out the line to the kernel's lock. My mmap error remap pfn range and let's also print out the status here yes and then i will return minus e again here okay and now the last thing i have to do is here in the file operations i have to set the mmap to my mmap and that's it that should be it for the driver for this, uh, for the page shift and page size, I have to include ASM page here. And for the remap function, I have to include Linux slash mm.h here. Okay, so now let's take a look at the user space application, which I will use to test it. So at the end, I will get a device file, which I will name dev my device. And over this test application, I can manipulate this. So basically this app, the first argument when I'm calling this app is the operation I want to do. This can be M for memory map, R for read, W for write, or P for accessing the memory mapped pointer. And I can pass some optional data in here. So here I'm opening my device file. And now I'm checking what the first letter of the first passed argument is. In case it's R, I'm performing a read to my device file. If it's W, I'm performing a write and I'm writing the um, second or the content of the second argument passed to the application into my device file. If I'm the operation is M, we will do the memory map. So here you can see the memory map user space call. I will go over the arguments briefly. The first one is an address. We won't use it, so I can set it to null. The second one is the amounts of memory in bytes I want to memory map and here I'm using 4k. Then we have the permissions flags which we have seen in the callback function and here I'm setting um, the permissions for reading and writing to the memory. Then we have a flag. mmap shared means we will get or memory map will return really a pointer to the my data variable of our driver. If we would have used mmap private here it would return a copy of the content to which my data is pointing currently. And if we are closing the applications or the changes we would make with read and write or with write wouldn't, would not be visible in the driver. But with mmap shared, we will really get the pointer of, um, of um, to my data. Then the next argument is the file descriptor of our device file and the last one is an offset but I don't need an offset as your page aligned in he here. Okay and in case um, this returns a valid pointer everything worked well in case this returned a null pointer an error occurred. In case we have passed a third argument I will yeah copy this argument to this text buffer here and then I will perform a mem copy so I will copy text to pointer and this way I will manipulate my data from the driver. In case and then I will read I will read back so I will set text to zeros and then copy the content of pointer to text and then I will print it out. And in case I'm um, or I'm, the first argument is P 
I will need an offset and what I'm doing here as you can see here is I'm memory mapping my pointer once again and then I'm type casting it from void pointer to a character pointer and I'm adding the offset and then I'm printing out the current char on this position. This is what I'm doing here. Okay, now let me try to build the driver and the test application. Let's see if I made any mistakes. Yes, I did. Word to physical, yeah. Not phi, but phys for physical. Uh, no encryption key. Okay, let's run make once again. This time it, it's looking good. And you see I have also compiled my test application. So if I look here, I have an A out and my kernel module. So let me load my kernel module first. Okay, then I have to create a device file with make not. The name should be my dev my device. It's a character device file. Major number 64, minor zero, done. So now I have my device file here. And now let's test our test application. So if I'm writing hello world, to it and now let's read it back you can see yes this is working i can read and write to my device file but if i'm using memory map here hey you can see the output is just the same only the access method has changed so now we have access this directly over the pointer hey this is really working so if i'm passing an argument here this here will be copied to the my data pointer and if you're if you are reading it back now, it changed. And last but not least, I want to show you um, with the pointer. So if I will get offset 2, there should be this J here. Or this Y. Y. Yeah. Yes. Or 5 should be the T of this. Yeah. So it's working. Cool. So that's how to implement the memory map callback in a Linux driver. I hope you've enjoyed the video and learned something. In case you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee and buymeacoffee.com slash for Linux. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching and goodbye.